In this lesson, we're going to talk about square roots. So um, a, the square root is something that we're going to do to a number. We'll take the square root of a number. And the way we'll know when we're wanting to take the square root of a number is we'll often see this symbol right here. Kind of looks like a long division symbol, uh, but instead of just having the two lines as with long division, it'll have this kind of tail on it. Okay, and so that's how we'll be able to tell when we're taking the square root of a number. And this symbol, by the way, is referred to as a radical symbol. Okay, so that's just for your knowledge moving forward. Um, okay, so what does it mean to take the square root of a number? Let's use an example. Let's take the square root of 36, okay, which symbolically we would write like this, the square root of 36. So the square root of 36 is the number that you square to make 36. So what number do I square or multiply by itself to make 36? Well, the answer would be 6, right? 6 squared equals 36, so therefore I would say the square root of 36 is 6. So in order to figure out the square root of a number, we need to have some knowledge about um, what numbers times themselves equal. So to help us out here, let's make a little list on the side before we do any of these examples. So I know that 1 squared, of course, is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. Okay, so I'm just getting all this from my basic multiplication facts. And hopefully we'll find this helpful as we do some of these problems. All right, and this is really where our multiplication facts stop, right? Okay, so um, so here's all the perfect squares from 1 to 100. So the square root of 64, right, I'm looking for something times itself or something squared to equal 64. Well, I can just look in this list here and see that 8 squared equals 64. So that's great. So that means the square root of 64 equals 8. Oh boy, you can barely see that. Sorry about that. Square root of 64 equals 8. Okay. Now this next example, we have the square root of 169. Well, shoot, 169 isn't appearing in my list here. So um, I know that the answer's got to be bigger than 10, right? Because I've gone 1 squared all the way up to 10 squared, and I've only made it to 100. So let's try some things above 10. So maybe let's start with, say, 12, okay? So if I was to square 12, that means I'm going to multiply 12 by itself. So we end up with 144, okay? Well, that's not quite it, but we're getting close, right? And uh, so let's, you know, we could maybe try 14 here. 14 times 14, so we get 16. And 5, 0, 4, and 1, and whoops, went too large. So if the square root of 169 is going to be a nice value, it better be right in between there. So my guess is it's going to be 13, but let's just go ahead and multiply to confirm. And yes, when you multiply 13 times itself, you get 169. So that means the square root of 169 is 13. All right, and a problem like this, if you have things happening inside of the square root, um, like subtraction, uh, please make sure that you go ahead and do that subtraction first. You kind of treat them like parentheses in that sense. Do this stuff first before you actually take the square root. So we'll first do 49 minus 24. So we get 25, so the square root of 25, and we ask ourselves, what times itself equals 25? Well, of course, 5 is the answer to that. And then finally, 4 times the square root of 25. Um, just like when we worked in absolute values, um, once you have just a single number inside absolute values, you take the absolute value before doing anything else. So same thing here. Uh, we are going to take the square root before we multiply by 4. So the square root of 25, just like in the last example, we understood that that was 5. So I 
take the square root, and then after I'm done taking the square root, I then multiply 4 times 5 to get 20.